Hello and welcome to Treasure Vessels, our podcast where we want to discuss your songs in the light of the living word of God. Oh, hello everybody. This is Carolyn Burnett coming to you from Lexington, Kentucky. I almost forgot to put my mic up here for my little backup audio. And it is a beautiful Saturday morning. It is right now 6.30 in the morning for me. Yes, I was up at 4. So that I would not look like I was halfway asleep when um, we got to meet our beautiful and wonderful guest today. But um, before uh, we introduce her, I want to say good morning, India. Hello, Manasseh Nand. Hello, Karin. Good afternoon to you from India. This is uh, uh say guys. Uh, anyone doesn't know how to pronounce it, say it's like Manase. So um, it's 4 p.m. here, almost evening, and it's a nice day, and I feel very good today. So before wasting much time, I would like to uh, go ahead and welcome our guest today from Hindulin, and. Um, She's a very great uh, musician, and she works also in Dutch Airways. Okay, not more details. Uh, let us find out more about her from her. Welcome to Treasure Vessels. Thank you very much, Manasse. Manasse. It's very nice to meet you now and to see you. You look great. Thank you. Thank you, Eve. Uh, what time is it there in Amsterdam? Uh, right now it's uh, 12.30 and noon. Mm -hmm. And well, it's it's spring here, but it doesn't feel like spring. It's it's gray. It's rainy. It feels more like autumn. So mm -hmm. I hope in the future for some sunny days. I hope so too. We've had a lot of those rainy days and cold days here lately too. Even though it's spring for us, so let us all change the weathers because here it's always sunny and too hot. I'm wishing for some rains here. Yes. I can imagine. <laughs> yes, so so um Eve, well why don't you tell our listeners your, your name and your SoundCloud name? Uh my name is Evelyn and short is Eve. So I thought well for my SoundCloud I will uh use Jazz Eve because my heart and passion is in jazz and I'm all jazz. Mm -hmm. So Jazz Eve, I thought it's the perfect name for me. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, I just came across you uh, recently and um, just fell in love with your voice and your music. And Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. I'm so glad that we were able to um, have you come on. And um, you have uh, got some people that you collaborate with. Yes, that's right. Uh, so uh, mention their names for us, if you would. Uh, well, it, it, it all started uh, three years ago when I uh, met a friend of a friend who is a guitarist, a jazz guitarist, and uh, I met him, we shook hands, and then he got his guitar in five minutes, mm -hmm. and my friend said, well, Eve sings. So we started singing jazz covers and everything, and there was such a musical click. And then we went on playing till four o'clock in midnight. And <laughs> since, the, uh, since then, I have a collaboration or a combo with Chris. It's called Easy Jazz, and mm -hmm. we started performing uh, at art galleries and so on. Very nice. nice. And then uh, the doors opened to music, and he introduced me to vandalism and then to make some good recordings on SoundCloud. Mm -hmm. And well then, yeah, people started uh, giving comments on my music and invited me uh, for collaborations like, like Rini. And then, uh, well, some other people on SoundCloud I have some projects with. So since, yeah, the doors were opened by some other people for me, then things started flowing and in three years a lot happened and I'm very happy for that. That is wonderful. Well, yeah. before we get too much farther in the conversation, we'd like to let people have a little a sample of what you sound like. Yeah, that's nice. All right, let's Thank hear you. your first uh, 
clip of some tunes. I wish you were my coffee, I would surely be the spoon I stare you kind of clockwise in mornings, afternoons At night a crystal glass, fill me with your wine I would drink every last drop till every drop of you was mine There's a longing inside me that burns and bleeds A yearning that blinds me which I'm willing to feed This deep dark desire not burning with shame Has turned into a fire where it once was a flame No claims, no demands, I'm not asking for much All I need is your hand I'll wear pink on you, it's lovely. Oh, you, my love, like a leak in faucet. Oh, you, my love, like a leak in faucet. Oh, you, my love, like a leak in faucet. Don't ever stop. Don't ever stop dripping. Don't ever stop dripping. It's springtime in the city. I'm an uninvited guest at your door. But rest assured, I'm a season which will pass. First, I'll cast out all your devils. I will cleanse you with my flakes. I will melt your worried heart, but can't promise it won't break apart. I might be late this year, this season. But no, I'm heartfelt and sincere. A solemn promise I a sense will boom again Once I melt your heart you'll know that spring is here Once I melt your heart you'll know that spring is here That is great. Thank you. <laughs> yes, the first uh, song on that clip is the first song that I heard from you. And, yeah. and uh, when I heard that I just had to click over on your page and then I listened to everything else on there as well and it's all great. Now, um, all of those songs there you did with Reini? Is that how you say his name? No, it's just like um, seven months ago, I met, uh, like eight months ago, I met Reini on Vandalism. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so he helped me. Uh, he said, well, he offered me, like, do you only do covers? Did you think about having your own songs? I'm not much of a songwriter, and he is. And he said, well, I would like to help you. So since then, uh, our first one was Dripping Faucets. It was our first uh, yeah, collaboration together. And, well, he's an awesome songwriter. He uses these this metaphors. And, yeah, the longer I got to know him, the longer I knew he's always writing, writing, writing. It's his passion. And he says about himself, I'm a compulsive writer. I have to write like writing in a diary. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing from him is he's also a musician. He said, it's awesome what you can do with only three chord songs on a guitar, acoustic, the lyrics, and then some singing, mm -hmm. because he's also an awesome singer. Mm -hmm. So then we started, and you know, the latest one was, I wish you were my coffee. And he said, well, Eve, we have to do something with your jazz influence. He's only like country folk, and if you mix this, you know, you get such a nice sound, mm -hmm. and we are so happy with this, that so many people like this, and, and we plan to go on trying to find this mix between jazz and folk and country. That's very uh, I wish you were my coffee is, is, is a perfect, I think, example of how he can do this, mm -hmm. with his, his that... words and the melody. I only did the singing, so. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, you are a great singer. I love your voice. And um, speaking of Thank that, you. when did you start singing? How did you start off singing? Since I was little, basically. Uh, and um, but then, yeah, a lot, a lot 
of things were going on in my life, so I left it where it was, but it was, it was always inside me. I did some things in a cover band and didn't last very long, uh, performed on weddings and parties, and that's it basically, and I didn't have the energy or whatever to, to just or, or met the right people to do something with it, but I knew all along in my heart something would happen, and it happened hmm. in the last few years. So I guess I'm a late bloomer, mm -hmm. but it's never too late, you know? No, it's and never I, too late. I, everything comes out, what I had inside me all along. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. So do you mind if I ask you just a couple things about yourself? Yeah, um, sure. So uh, do you live in the city or are you in the country? Where is it that you're living? Uh, I live now in Amsterdam, mm -hmm. the capital of the Netherlands, like 25 years. Mm -hmm. But I grew, grew up in the country, but also in Belgium, because my parents moved a lot when I was little, and I moved a lot myself. Uh, also in Amsterdam, I lived in uh, a lot of different uh, areas. Mm -hmm. So this is my, uh, my house now for the last six years. It's a very nice area. It's not far from the center, but it's quiet though. And it's very old house, historical house from 1900. Mm -hmm. It's completely renovated, but still all the old details are here. So I live on the third floor. I don't know if you can see the stairs up yes. there. Uh -huh. There's a kind of attic bedroom. Nice. And it's, it is very nice. I live here alone. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's for one person. It's it's really great ask, apartment. Uh, yeah, I was like when uh, heard your songs. I was gonna ask like, um, uh, like uh, what is your primary language because of your accent? Uh, like which country exactly you're from? Like are you uh, originally from Netherlands only, or from any other country? No, I'm originally is, uh, from the Netherlands. So okay. it is not my native my native language is Dutch and because I work at an airport well I speak English every day I can speak like with an English accent or American if you like me to very good, ah, very good. so you, you can do an English or American accent nice like sophisticated tomatoes tomatoes or now I will do like the American with the R ah nice so, what do you do at the airport, if you don't mind my asking? Uh, yeah, I was always interested in the airline business, and um, well, I, pl I applied for work for a temp agency, and so I got to get many jobs at the airport. And I was the beginning; I was trying, well, to figure out how it was to be an air hostess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have some kind of fantasies about it, so. I experienced that, but it's not my kind of job. I don't like the work environment in an airplane and the time differences, and I'm very clumsy, so, you know, it's it's like, yeah, you have to serve drinks to people, and it was one disaster, so mm -hmm. I didn't do that for long, and discovered that uh, at the airport itself, you have the transfer area, the handling, the passenger handling at the gates, and you get to know a lot of people and you know not one day is the same mm -hmm. every day something happens and you are more busy with uh, working in the computer uh, just issue tickets or whatever so it's more um, yeah organizing so that suits me more than serving people and Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I do that now for 12 and a half years. Okay. It's the longest job I have ever. So mm -hmm. I, I think I will stay there for a long time still, and I work part-time. So it gives me a lot of opportunities also to swap my shifts, do the evening shifts, because I'm not a morning person, and uh, give me uh, a lot of free time for my music. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's such a nice combination. I'm not always there, you know, I have enough free time. That sounds great. I like. Mm -hmm. 
I also wish to have a part-time job so I can also spend my time with music. <laughs> yeah, and the benefit is, of course, because we have this irregular shift. You get like uh, the extra extra money because you do those shifts. So it's different when you work like a nine to five job. You have like a basic salary, and here you get like uh, the extra compensation for the hours you make, like evening shifts, night shift, working, weekends, holidays. So that compensates. That's why I can work less to get more free time. And yeah. Very nice. So I, can, I can manage with the salary I have right now. So that sounds yeah. that sounds great. Yeah. I um, would like to uh, ask you. So the, the song that we asked you to um, talk about today, your feature song. Um, yes. How do you say the name of the, the flower? Well, it's actually I have an example here. I don't know if you can see it. This is the, I don't know how to hold it, the Camboya flower. Camboya. Nice. The, the, there are different names for it. It's uh, growing in Bali. In Balinese, it's Japun. And it's most known under the name of Frangipani. It's also uh, growing in Hawaii some other countries and frangipani well it's a little bit difficult to put it in a song so camboya flower is also the name for this flower and uh yeah i think that is perfect uh, for the song that is perfect this is the one <laughs> so so you uh had gone to bali yes uh also, my work gives me an opportunity to fly mm -hmm. uh, for almost nothing all around the world. And five years ago, the first time in, in Bali, I traveled to a lot of places. I can't explain, I can't express it in words, uh, what was going on inside of me. I just fell in love with everything and I had to cry from emotion. And that was the first in my life. I always, had, since I was little, I had like a kind of connection with Indonesia. With what? Don't ask me why, but there are, if you know the history a little bit, there were a lot of Dutch colonies in Indonesia mm. in like 1800. And there are a lot of mixed people also here in Holland who have a Dutch father or Dutch mother uh, from Indonesia. But they had to get out, all those mixed people, uh, when Indonesia was be become independent. So a lot of people in Holland are still mixed uh, with, with Indonesia. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always, since I was little, I have like a kind of connection with those people. Okay. And they also brought their culture here. So they are very, the hospitality is... Is amazing. I was as a little girl. I, I had two uh, half Indonesian friends was always spending their my time at, at their home. Uh, the mother was cooking. You know, the brothers, all the brothers were always playing guitar. And I don't know. All my life, I'm surrounded uh, by uh, the mixed Indonesian people, and they're always joking, like. If, I don't know, you must have been Indonesian or whatever in a formal life or whatever. Mm -hmm. I can't explain it. It's, it's just a feeling. And I knew I always wanted to go to Indonesian, Indonesia and Bali and other islands. And it was really above my expectation. There was something going on that I knew all along. And that's something it's difficult to explain. Okay. Well, that yeah. that is very very wonderful a sounding childhood to me and uh so i'm sure you can tell us a little more about your experience there when we um discuss your song sure. here and yeah. um i would like to ask you if you would uh want to read the words of your song to us can you hear me carolyn yes okay uh i will send you sense in your darkest hours I'm still here. I color your nights with yellow flowers, 
above my left ear. I'll be there for everyone to see in the daytime. But at night, I spread my scent for you like a ghost of a flower. When the sphinx moth lands on my yellow petals, I'll be your flame. With my fragrance, I will send your temples and be yours again. I'll be there in your darkest nights, your darkest hours. When you smell my scent, you know I'll always be your Cambodia flower. If I ever fall down from the tree and you'll shed some tears, I will send you scents from Cambodia flowers above my left ear. It's a super beautiful lyric. Let me tell you. It okay. is. Thank you. That is really a beautiful lyric, Eve. And uh, you had written me that this song has um, spiritual uh, meaning to you. Uh, do you That's want, right. Yeah. Do you want to discuss it a little bit? And then we, you know, we like to use the Bible, some scripture here to talk sure. about your song. No problem. I'd love to discuss this song because it's my first original and it is very special and dear to me because I uh, had this idea in my head, you know, I have to do something for Bali, the people for Bali, and maybe I can make a song. I'm not a songwriter. So, uh, Rini, I told Rini this story. I think I want to do something with this. I don't just want to have it in my head. I want to get it out. And... Then uh, he, he, he wrote these lyrics and it was like exactly how I want it to be because I'm a person, I talk much when I write, I use a lot of details. So it's, it's an art to, to, to get this in song without having all those details, just the ascension. Yeah. I don't know how Rini does it, but he showed this to me and also a few chords. And then, uh, yeah, the song was like, I was singing it and it was like, it, this is mine. It, it, it's my story. And it's, it's, it's my dedication to the uh, spiritual loving people of Bali, the beautiful nature and the Cambodia flower. The first time I was in Bali, uh, this is my first introduction with this flower. I picked it up from the ground. It was it fell from the tree and I smelled it and I looked at Dan at the time. He was my boyfriend. He was with me. I said, this is amazing. I never smelled something like this. I was in love with this flower. I took it. Uh, at night, I put it on my pillow. I woke up with it in the morning. The scent was still there. It's such a strong and powerful flower. When you think the flower is gone after 24 hours, I just discovered you put it in the water, it pops up, it's fresh again. Mm -hmm. So I came to discover that's why all the women wear it in their hair because. It's a poor country. They don't have uh, money to, wear, to, to to buy uh, perfumes or whatever. It's the scent, and it also has a meaning in their spiritual. Uh, it, the the culture is uh, Hindu, so they they use it a lot at their temples, their offerings uh, to protect the, the the life and the shops. And for me, the 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 Cambodia flower is the symbol of Bali. So. It was obvious this had to be like the title of my song. And then I gave the details to Rini. And I, I, the, 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 the deepest message that is in the song is for me, it's very important. With this person I talked about before, I had a lot of deep spiritual discussions. And you all have those, those questions, like life questions. What happens when you die? So we had this conversation and he's, he's, I said, like, if I'm gone earlier than you, uh, 
shall I give you like a kind of sign? You know that I'm still around or whatever in this universe. What would it be? What would it be? I said, when, when you smell the scent of this flower, this is something between us. We experience this. Then you will know I'm there. So it means also that uh, there's always a connection. The meaning of the flower above your above your left ear means as a woman that you're already uh, taken and uh, that you belong to, to one person or a deep connection that you have a connection with someone. That's nice. So that, that's also in the song. So for me, it was also my uh, dedication to this person because I have a special uh, relation, still have a special relationship. We will be friends forever till eternity. So this is... That is yeah, this is my, very, very nice, very nice. So this is in short what the song means to me. Okay. Yeah, just wanted to uh, say something which just came into my mind. Like you said, uh, someone asked you what happens after death, and uh, you replied like, "If I die before you, so you know I uh, can give you some sign or like a scent mm -hmm. that I'm still allowed to." So uh, that's what I came across with the verse when I was uh, preparing for uh, this, like lyrics, like when I was looking for the scriptures. Um, Jesus, when uh, he was talking to his disciples, he said, like you know, um, but it is actually best for you that I go away because if I don't, the counselor won't come. Mm -hmm. If I do go away, he will come because I will send him to you, and. When he comes, he will convince the world of its sin. And um, like we know the counselor, uh, Jesus here said, was about the Holy Spirit. He, uh, uh, like, who will guide us in the darkest hour you know, when Jesus is not yeah. with us. Yeah. yeah. So that, yeah, that's what I thought of the, you know, uh, the scripture when I was reading your lyrics. And oh, you said the kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, like when Jesus, and like the same way, like Jesus uh, is talking about the sign that if I'm not here, I'm going to send a counselor, a helper, or uh, a spirit that will guide you through the darkest dark, and that I'm still around you and I still care for you. And oh, that's so beautiful that you have this interpretation because mm -hmm. it's true for you. So mm -hmm. I like the people of Bali, they do this. I thank you. Very nice. Beautiful okay. to hear that, uh, uh, Manasse. Mm -hmm. oh. Well, um, I told Manasse, I said, I bet that what I got is going to be a lot different from what you got. Mm -hmm. And um, here I... I even surprised myself because reading your lyrics, I thought I was going to go in one direction, which I think is more the direction Manasseh has gone. But um, I was, I felt led to read out of the book of Esther. And I don't know if you are familiar with the story or if you are, if you remember it, that um, it was during the time of the, the children of Israel, they had been taken captive by the Babylonians. And so there was, um, there were still some that lived in Israel, but uh, there were um, a lot of people that lived in Babylon. And the king at that time, I think his name was Assyrius. I'm not sure if I pronounce it right, but he had a big banquet and he had a queen named Vashti. And um, mm -hmm. after several days of partying, he wanted the queen to come and present herself to everyone and show how beautiful she was. And she's, she was like, I'm not going out there in front of a bunch of drunk men, you know. And so that's basically how I understand the story. And But because she refused to go out for him, he and his advisors removed her from being the queen. And so after that, he was sad he, in his heart for her. And they said, well, let's cheer him up. We're going to get him another wife. So they said, we've got this brilliant... We've got this brilliant idea. We're going to go through all the city and uh, get all these beautiful virgins, and you're going to pick one to be your queen. Mm -hmm. And so um, 
one of the virgins that was picked, her name was Esther, and she happened to be Jewish. Now, they didn't know when they, um, the king didn't know that she was Jewish. Um, so um, there's a part here I wanted to read. It says, so for, for 12 months, um, six months of the time, the women beautified themselves with oil of myrrh. And with six months, they used spices and ointments. And so they had a scent about them um, that was they were being prepared for the king. So when it came time for Esther to go into the king, she asked for nothing except what was advised for her by the king's eunuch. And Esther found favor in the eyes of everyone. And when the king saw her, he loved her more than all the virgins. And he put the royal crown upon her, and he made her the queen. And uh, I, the your song, it it just in in some ways to me, it's a beautiful love song as well as a spiritual song. Yeah. And to me, the the story of Esther is the same way too, uh, because in the church, uh, in in Christianity, we we see ourselves married to Jesus and he is our one our you know even though i'm also married to my husband jesus yeah. jesus yeah. is my spiritual husband you know mm -hmm. and he's also my husband's husband he's manasseh's and yeah. John, you know yeah. so that is kind of strange for people to understand but it's like yes we could put that flower behind our left ear and say that flower represents jesus to us you know we yeah. And so that that was a, a beautiful thing that I found there. Yeah, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. that, you, uh, it didn't that stop. You tell me your interpretation mm -hmm. because, like I, I read, uh, I don't know where, but it, it's on. Uh, if you make a song, you get some feedback sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, when people really tell you, like, uh, like now, what the song means or the interpretation, or, uh, yeah, then you you never have an idea, even if you don't know people, and they hear this song from the interview, what the interpretation, you never can imagine, mm -hmm. you know, what it does for people, so it is uh, so nice uh, to hear from you too, it goes deeper than just a comment on SoundCloud or mm -hmm. on Vandalism. Oh, yeah. Okay, I like your voice. It's a nice song, blah, blah, blah. It's also nice. I wish sometimes I could speak to everyone mm -hmm. like, to see the difference, different interpretation. Yes. Or, it's your song. You have your interpretation. You made it like, okay, there's an, an, a mystery message in it. You can never guess you mm -hmm. know just what we discussed if mm -hmm. you just hear the song that's so right you can make a love story you can hear a spiritual message of course but mm -hmm. it's a hidden message that is for a special person also yes so that we came up with the discussion well you know maybe you you didn't know of course that's why the interview is also for i would like to mention that mm -hmm. yeah, uh, Every word of this song is like uh, you know a hidden uh, message or secret message to me because uh, you know like this word temple uh, that also yeah. made me think of something like uh, Caroline just mentioned uh, through that uh, little uh, story from the Old Testament about Esther that uh, why does anyone will you know put oil and all the sense so that you know like to prepare for a king so. Um, we all know that Jesus is going to come again to take us all, like take his bride, as uh, we are all married to him. So, um, so to prepare ourselves for him, like we call our body the temple. So here it's in your the temple. Yeah. yeah, where it says like with my fragments, I will send your temples and be yours again. So I take the sense here. As the word of God, so I have the bottle of scent with me. If I am, you know, putting on me, I will have that fragrance of Jesus. 
and then he'll be mine again you know mm-hmm. on that day of like uh, return when he'll come back that's so, good uh, i can talk a lot of all the words that's what this i want to do Nice. I can too. Well, you know, Carolyn, I, I, I'm not really a Christian or mm-hmm. Catholic. I already told you. Yes. But I know, of course, because my my grandma was a Christian. So as a child, I was like fascinated by churches mm-hmm. because I thought more of the artwork, the statues, Maria, Jesus, the singing. So I went a lot to church and I read some things in the Bible. But like I I told you. I read also a lot of other books like Dalai Lama, Osho. I'm into the Balinese culture, the Hindu, you know, I that, that everywhere. I think what I can take and consider mine mm-hmm. and keep it in here. And yeah, well, I'd like to say uh, uh, I believe in God. God is love. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whatever uh, your religion is, you know, I. I I don't feel the need, never had to, and I was free of choice because I was not raised this way. I even went to Sunday school because I liked it, and mm-hmm. my friends were on Sunday school. So, And then, you know, when they had to do the Bible studies, I was like 12, and I thought, well, I don't like this. So I had a choice to then, you know, and throughout my, my life, I discovered uh, a lot of beautiful things, and uh, I was uh like free to do whatever I, I i wanted you know and i know and god knows i'm a good person and he knows okay i think he he also respects my choice mm-hmm. and i respect everybody's choice i respect all religions and if you see in my house there are living uh, buddha statues uh, next to a Jesus statue, I have a Maria here. I have, like, it's it's like showing people in my house that everything is welcome here. And I'm a person uh, that uh, um, not want, the older I become, not want to analyze anymore, you know. I say I believe, period, mm-hmm. without, you know, you can have like a long discussions, of course, about life, yeah. about religion, and sometimes it's religion against religion. I have a mm-hmm. cousin who's very dear to me. This is at Jehovah Witnesses, mm-hmm. you know, and she she right. went there at an older age, so I know her differently, but she's still the same person. Mm-hmm. She respects me, and when I'm invited in their home, of course, it's a discussion, but. You know, it, it, it's it's a discussion that uh, okay, I respect their opinion, they respect mine, and they never can convince me because you know I read the Bible just for interest. They give me your Jehovah man, let me read it. I'm interested. You know, it's not that I reject that, but I'm not feeling like uh, analyzing and analyzing. Mm-hmm. Like some people, I, I can see that, that they do that. Well, your religion is right, mine is right. No, it doesn't matter. It's love. Because mm-hmm. that's what I'm here for. That's why I, I believe in, and I believe in a greater power. I call it God. I call it universe. I mm-hmm. call it a greater power. I can feel it. Of course, I can feel yep. it in my heart. I can feel it in my soul. And, yeah, basically, yeah, that's it. I always say, I believe in God. Mm-hmm. Uh, just for a little background, Sometimes, you know? uh, just for a little background about myself, uh, I don't know if you have uh, watched uh, any of those videos where I have talked about the religious belief which I have that I don't believe in any uh, religion thing because that is man-made. God didn't make any religion. And even this Christian term, that is not a God-made thing. We humans made it. And I don't say I'm a Christian. I just say I love everyone and I follow Jesus, what he taught me. He taught me to love everyone. Even if it's a sinner, I'm supposed to love him because love can cure everything. And I don't say that, you know, this religion is good or uh, this religion is not good because I don't believe in religion because that is a human-made thing. And whatever human-made will get, you know, uh, it, it's a, 
limited uh, period of time. I mean, it will get destroyed one day or it will vanish. But what God has made, the spirits will be everlasting, eternal. And, mm -hmm. you know, love is again the base of the eternity, the eternal life. Mm -hmm. And that's what I came to know through Jesus. That's and as you said, like, you, know, you had the free uh, choice. My mom and dad never asked me to go to church and I still don't go to church. But I'm still, uh, you know, as the world calls me, Christian because I follow Christ. But I don't say I'm a Christian. Because, you know, I have never been to a Sunday school. And uh, till the time of, uh, like, uh, like, when I uh, turned 25, then I got baptized. And baptism is just a, uh, an act to show the world that I accepted Christ finally in my life. Even if I'm not going and dipping in the water, doesn't mean I'm not getting baptized. If I have, uh, you know, accepted Christ uh, in my heart, that day I get baptized. And, you know, like, it's, again, as you said, we can discuss a lot and uh, we, have, we can have a very good, long discussion. But definitely we can save that for a later part. We can exchange mails about it. Yeah. And we can put it in the blog yeah. also. <laughs> well, let's um, let's have a little listen of the song before we go uh, much yeah. farther. <laughs> I will send you saints in your darkest hour I'm still here I color your nights with yellow flower by my left ear I'll be there for everyone to see in the daytime But at night I'll spread my scent for you Like the ghost of a flower When the sphinx's mark lands on my yellow petals I'll be a flame With my fragrance I will Send your temples And be yours again Well I'll be there In your darkest nights Your darkest Hours when you smell my scent, you know I'll always be your Camboya flower. That is really a beautiful song, Eve, and 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 Rami did a. Caroline, what I Caroline. almost forgot to mention mm -hmm. is that uh, Rini wrote the song, mm -hmm. and uh, at first he did his three chords, mm -hmm. but he thought, well, he met online. Uh, he does a lot of things with her, a, Br a Brazil woman from Brazil, Stella Schiavo, mm -hmm. and she plays awesome guitar and. She made also this uh, uh, this track perfect. She's very good in mixing those tracks. So he asked her to do this nice. because he thought it deserved like a good sound or a good track. And this is also uh, with the help of uh, dear uh, Stella Schiavo from Brazil, whom we never met, only online because she's all the way in Brazil. Mm -hmm. So how great is this? Mm -hmm. That yeah, is wonderful. I just want to mention her because she deserves also the credits for, yeah, for the guitar. I know her. Uh, I've been following her in SoundCloud from a long time. Yeah. I know, yeah, she is an amazing guitar player. And 
Uh, I saw that in your track that um, the play the guitar track is from Stella. So yeah. yes. She's a beautiful person. If you hear her music and you talk to her, you know, she's a beautiful voice. And she does, together with Rini, she uh, has a kind of a website and blog because they collaborate in the name of the Whispering Furs, mm -hmm. making very, like, dreamy music together. So it's also a very good combination that mm -hmm. I'd like to see. We'll definitely have to look into that. Well, yeah. <laughs> if you, if it's okay with you, Eve, I want to read a little more scripture I got uh, while I was looking at your lyrics. To sure. me, to me, I was actually surprised when something like this happens. Uh, I always feel like it's from the Lord that I get these mm -hmm. types of things because there is a connection here. I felt that your song was also like a love song, as I mentioned, and a spiritual love song as well, like our love between God and our love between men and women or whoever you love. Um, so yeah. in the Song of Solomon, uh, which we know is a love song between Solomon and uh, the woman that he loved, but it is also interpreted spiritually and it's very poetic. There's a lot of language in here that um, has deeper meaning than just what it says. So um, in the first chapter of the book, it says, A bundle of myrrh is my well-beloved unto me, and he shall lie be at night betwixt my breasts. And so um, she is talking about um, the smell of her, the one that she loves, that would be on her skin, mm -hmm. that would touch her, um, lying on her, on her, on her chest. And in in chapter two, it says, "Now it's now it's Solomon who's talking, or or in our case, we could say it is Jesus talking. Um, I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valleys." And then it says, as the lily among the thorns, so is my love among the daughters. As the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down under his shadow and with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. Um, so it, it is talking about, you know, your love being like a flower, the, the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valleys. And something that's different than, you know, a regular tree of wood. There's also a fruit there yeah. and, and a sweetness. Um, in chapter 3, it talks about, By night on my bed I sought him whom my soul loves. And um, your song also talks about, you know, at, at night uh, desiring yeah. your love. In chapter five, it talks about, um, so so as the custom there, and I know it's a custom in India, and actually I do myself too, but um, back then, you know, they a lot of their floors were dirt. And so before they would uh, go to bed, they would wash their feet and, you know, sometimes oil, oil them up um, as they laid in the bed. And so they didn't really want to jump out of the bed when when their feet were clean and oiled up. And so the in in the chapter five it talks about how she had washed her feet and laid in her bed, and then her love came to the door and he said, Come here, come here and open the door to me. And she was like, I just washed my feet. You know, but, yeah, then, yeah. <laughs> but then he was like he was like, Come to me, my love. And so she's like I can't resist him and she jumps up out of the bed but by the time she does he's gone away from the door but he had touched the the grate um, of the door and it says I rose to open the door to my beloved and my hands dripped with myrrh and my fingers with the scent of the sweet smelling myrrh so where he had been her hands touched it and she smelt his 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 presence just like you're a Kimboya flower leaving the mm -hmm. present, the scent there, that the scent of the flower is very, 
very beautiful and and um it has a lot of meaning to it now myrrh actually is comes from a tree um and or it's at least a woody plant i don't i think it is a tree but i know so, that how they get the myrrh is they have to wound it they have to yeah. you know stab it or scrape it and then this sap leaks out of it and then they collect it and um it's used for a lot of different things. Um, they use it, you know, of course, as incense. They use it in, um, you know, religious ceremonies. Um, also in Egypt and some other countries, at least in ancient times, they did use it to embalm bodies. Mm -hmm. um, for... Uh, health reasons they they also use it to heal abrasions and wounds and it's even good for supposedly it's good for bad breath and for cleaning your teeth and gums and so it this whole picture here to me of course this is my interpretation and looking at it this is what we do we like to look at things through the bible is that the the whole picture of the flower and the scents um, and then going into the myrrh is a picture another picture of Jesus to me because he was wounded for us he was wounded for our transgressions he was crushed for our iniquities and and it says the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed that's out of the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, that just like the myrrh, the tree, is, is wounded so that the fragrance pours out, Jesus was also wounded for us. You know, he was pierced in his hands and his side and his feet, and he bled. And, and it's like the fragrance of the myrrh of his whole life being came out his blood was shed for us. And that in itself is hard for us to understand. Why would God, you know, allow or even yeah. want something like that? And actually, as old as I am, and I told you that uh, we're both the same age this year. We're see? the same age. <laughs> we don't talk about it a lot. Yeah, so. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> but it's taken me all this lifetime to try to actually get an understanding. It's... Uh, I have accepted this all my life, but I never really understood it. Why Why does God uh, need to have a blood sacrifice? I never really completely understood it, even though I've read the Bible for years. I, yeah, you know, oh, that's probably difficult then. Yeah, well, I, I'm starting to get an understanding. I mean, I know the words, what the words say, Yeah. that yeah. the wages or the payment for sin is death and death requires the shedding of blood and so so the way it, it works out is that because we all sin we fall short of the glory of God and so it is our death that you know would be required and um, but what happens is that Jesus died in our place and because mm -hmm. he is the Son of God and the perfect sacrifice God accepts his blood offering for all of us. And so in that way, because it is done in love, and it's a beautiful thing that he allowed himself to be crucified for us, that this is a beautiful fragrance of love that is brought up to God. And so I'm actually, I wasn't expecting your song to take me in that direction. Yeah. But it did when I was going over the scriptures. And, yeah, that's uh, you very know, nice, Gump. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I have some more to say about some of your lyrics here. Um, when the Sphinx moth lands on my yellow petals, would you, why is that line in there? What does that mean? Uh, well, I actually... I uh, really added this because he's a songwriter and so before I write this song, i never been to Bali, you can tell me the story. He's checking all the facts, you know, it has to be right. And I had to hear from him that 
the the the, the sphinx moth at night uh, go into this flower um, and then uh, yeah I'll be your flame there is some uh, a connection because the flower uh, does not have any nectar so which is very unusual and uh, yeah, so, something happens because the, the, the Sphinx moth lands on the yellow petals. I'll be your flame. It's, it's an, uh, uh, an expression uh, uh, about a, a chemical uh, reaction that uh, 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 is in the night. Because also in the night, the flower scents the most. It, it, it has the... the more scent than in the daytime. Wow, that is... So the, 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 with the Sphinx moth, I didn't know, I still don't exactly know, but he added it into the song because he thought, well, I looked it up and I think it's, it's so nice to use it in the song. Mm -hmm. So it is... Extra, it's Extra dimension, and I agreed with that. So, mm -hmm. and so it's interesting he, that probably the moth is used uh, for pollination but there's no nectar there that would draw the moth so it's interesting that the moth would go there anyway without nectar yeah so yeah. it must be a plan of god now to me what well, i well sometimes yeah you, you <laughs> figure out like nature you know how does it work who did this and maybe it's a plan of god or you know greater power it's 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 nature is amazing well you know uh god the scent of God and the beauty of God is actually more uh, stronger and more prevalent in darkness. Yeah. Um, in the darkest times of our lives, we are more aware of God. And so in that way, the fragrance of his love, you know, more fills our lives. Um, and I, I love the ending verses of this song, too. It says, if I ever fall down from the tree and you'll yeah. shed some tears, I will send you scents from Camboya flowers above my left ear. So it means basically, yeah, if I'm gone and I know that you will cry about me, uh, I will send you this, you know I'm always there. Mm -hmm. And uh, above my left ear, so it says it all to this person. Don't cry, I'm always here. We always have this connection because I still have the flower mm -hmm. on my left ear. Yes. And I would mm -hmm. have I have to take that into my interpretation here that Jesus was on the tree. He was literally nailed to the tree. And people did cry for him and we still cry for him. Sometimes God lets us experience the pain. Um, when in prayer that we we feel and understand that Jesus suffered and died for us and we can cry in prayer um, and feeling his presence and smelling his scent. And I have actually been in prayer meetings where we smelled a scent, a beautiful scent that came into the room and nobody knew where it was, but we felt mm -hmm. the presence of God and we believe that it was a scent from heaven. And and you're and and above my left ear is saying that I'm always with you. You're mine, and 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 that to us would be the promise of God and the Holy Spirit that He has put inside of us that says I am yours and you're mine. I've put my my mark upon you, and you are in the hand of God, and nobody can snatch you out of God's hand. And so when it is time for you to go and leave this earth. Don't be afraid, you know, you are here, you, you are safe and secure. And uh, I'm just totally in love with this song of yours and, and Rani. It's beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> A great compliment also uh, for Rini. So I Rini. will tell him and I hope next time you can interview him. Mm -hmm. but, so, uh, a lot to say about this song, probably. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what? What? Uh, remind. I was thinking yesterday about, of course, this song, and it popped into my mind that uh, I'm a huge uh, fan of uh, Stevie Wonder's music, 
and he made a lot of beautiful albums, uh, which uh, have album Journey uh, to the Secret Life of Plants. I don't know if you know it, but it is like, I think it's most beautiful work about nature, about plants, about mm. flowers. And his former wife, Sarita Wright, uh, she has a beautiful voice. She's on that album singing How I Wish I Would Come Back Like a Flower mm. uh, to spread the, the sweetness of love. And it is such a simple, beautiful song. But I think my song, it was not that I was thinking about that, but it's, it's not similar, but it's a kind of, you know, mm -hmm. a, it's about nature, it's about a flower. If I'm gone, I would like to come back as a flower mm -hmm. to spread the sweetness of love. Mm -hmm. And later on, I was thinking, oh, this, this is one of my favorites, favorite songs, actually. Mm. Uh, Don't look it up. It's, it's worth to listen to the whole album because it's all about, yeah, he's a very spiritual man. Mm -hmm. And you can hear it in this, in this album. The secret life of plants it's beautiful it sounds so wonderful just to mention that that yeah mm -hmm. manasse were you going to say something else no no i was just uh, enjoying listening to both of you good good well it and it's been a great great song to discuss eve but um i think right now we should uh let's go ahead and give another listen to your uh a second medley of songs Falls down the hall, cobbly marble floor, bounces up the wall, travels through the door, slips inside my heart, journeys through my soul. Walk a thousand miles without knowing where it's going. Sit and I stare. I know that I soon go mad in my solitude. I'm praying, dear Lord above, send back my. And in between it's nicotine And not much hard to find Black coffee Feeling low as the ground It's driving me crazy This waiting for my baby To maybe Around. I would be lucky to find me a man Who could love me the way that I am All my troubling ways That is definitely the Jazz Eve. Yes, this is uh, where I can get, uh, yeah, my, I like to do different styles, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. so, but this is my jazz side and you can hear it, my voice, mm -hmm. yeah, I let it go and, yeah. That's great, and, uh, you sound like you exactly. love it, you sound like you have a great Thank time singing, and if people want to you. find you on SoundCloud, they can go to soundcloud.com forward slash E E F J E dash T E R S C H E G G E T. Or you can just search her under Jazz Eve on SoundCloud. Do you have any other websites? Uh, well, I'm on uh, uh, Reverb Nation. Okay. Reverb Nation, which 
yeah, it's like kind of a website where you can uh, post your songs. And I have that with Easy Jazz, and I have that with Evrin, which I do with Rini. And there, well, there's not really much going on there. It's more like, you know, when people ask you, where can I find your music? It's, it's a nice web website to refer to, mm -hmm. but it's not anything like SoundCloud or mm -hmm. Vandalism, mm -hmm. which you get a lot of feedback or... Mm -hmm. So I actually never use that, but it, it, it is a nice page, mm -hmm. you know, you can add some nice pictures, videos, just the whole uh, picture for people you want to, to let them know about your music. Okay. So well, I don't know if you ever heard of it, Reverb yes. Nation. Oh yes, yes, we've got some friends who are on there. Eve, it's been so wonderful to have you with us today, we're so happy that uh, we could we can make this interview, and um, if it's all right with you, I'd like to say a little prayer for you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you Alrighty. so much. Thank I'm you. I'm very honored that you invited me for this. Thank, Thank you. you. We're honored to have you. Beautiful guest. Father God, in Jesus' name, I just ask you right now to touch Eve and her life um, and make it even more beautiful than it's ever been. We ask you, Father, to use her music and her love to um, spread your love through this earth. And we ask you to watch over her, the people that she loves, and her friends and family, and keep them all safe. We pray that every listening ear and that all of us involved here are watched over by you and that you um, help us to look up and see you, God, to look up out of this world of stress and rush and hurry and worry and to have a moment of peace and and realize that you do love us and that you're here. And we just thank you, God, for this time and for this opportunity, and we bless you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Eve. Thank you so much. We'll see you. That's a nice conversation. Thank you. Yes, thanks. Thank you, Manasse. We appreciate your listening to Treasure Vessels of the Living Word. You can find us and make comments on the audio tracks at our website, treasure-vessels.com. We hope you come back soon for our next podcast. Until then, God bless and thank you for listening.